My name is Emmanuel Eyaba. I'm the chairman directors guild of Nigeria, Abuja chapter. Um, a filmmaker and a media consultant. I was taking time to hail you couples because I did my first major production immediately I finished NYC. That was in 2011. And um, it still remains the biggest action series ever produced by an individual. And that was for the Nigerian Custom Service. You can Google it, the frontier. So um, I've also done um, a movie for the Nigerian Police Force. And um, there's a movie about NYC called Call to Service. I'm sure some of you saw it featuring Tony Abraham and a couple of other big names. I also directed it. Um, recently, we just finished a movie on fake news called When Wolves Cry. It actually featured one of the biggest stars in Cameroon, another star from Benin Republic, another star from Togo, and a that is actually an aspect of co-production. Now, filmmaking, as we know, has passed the level of wicked mother-in-law where they suppress new wife, where they carry come house. Films now have gone beyond just telling those stories we used to tell before. We are now telling stories that have serious global appeal. Stories that can resonate with someone anywhere in the world. Stories that can help us understand and know more about other people's cultural values. You know, there's so much wrong information circulating the whole space. What can actually help us to understand different cultures more is the film medium. So it's even a good thing that some of you young filmmakers are here so that you can begin to think the kind of stories you want to be telling tomorrow. Nigeria and South Africa, for instance, we've had so many issues of xenophobia. How can you tell what really happened? The challenges, how a South African was able to help a Nigerian who was in South Africa because of the whole xenophobia attack. But before you do that, you must first of all analyze and tell yourself what message does this movie you're planning to do, what solution is it bringing? I'm sure you, you, you do not want to do a movie that at the end of the day, instead of solving problem, everybody will come begin the fight war. That's not the kind of story you're talking about when you're talking of co-production. Because nobody will even want to get involved in terms of co-collaboration, -coll sponsorship, and everything. They really want to know the value you're adding, you're putting. They say that uh, when you put broom together, what it happen? It is sweep house clean. If you carry only one, one broom, if I share one, one, um, stick of broom for everybody now so yeah everybody sweep there's every tendency that the house is not going to be as clean as when we all put our own brooms together to sweep the house we've talked about number of cinemas the uh, my, the first uh, panelist who spoke spoke about it nigeria fine we they do plenty films well, well but where will they sell them have we come to understand have we asked ourselves the number of cinemas that we have, can it be equated to the number of persons that are in the country? Whether we like it or not. No, because. But there are some persons that will never go to cinema till Jesus comes. Now, what other avenue are we preparing and planning for them to see 
those films. So co-production is a very, very good thing. The million dollar question I will expect all of you to ask our panelists is where do we start from? Assuming you have this good story now, about maybe after school, somebody left South Africa and got there and somehow spied a bite and before you know it, started flying like Spider-Man. Before you know it, he came back to Nigeria. You know, they are just crazy ideas. You can think about your own. Where you must have had that kind of fantastic and good storyline, you now need a co-producer in South Africa. Because you definitely need to shoot some scenes in South Africa. You cannot say you're, you're doing a co-production with a South African company, for instance, and everything where they shoot, you shot it in Cuba. Then at the end of the day, you see a co-production you they do. It's not going to work. For it to actually be called a proper co-production deal, you can decide to shoot 60% in Nigeria and do 40% in South Africa. Another way to eat is language barrier. Like I told you about the film we just finished. We shot the film 60% English and 40% French. That was because we we're trying to see how we can also explore a new market. What co production does for you is it tends to give you a market you've not really been used to. It's possible you've been doing your films all this while, selling them in your own terrain and area. But the fact that you're bringing a producer who is actually based in South Africa, who also has his own audience in South Africa, automatically now, you find out that your reach is expanded. You're going to reach new frontiers. You're going to reach new people. And the good thing about film is, once you, once you do a good project, there's every tendency that there's going to be a follow-up of that good project. Black Book, that everybody's talking about right now, which is like one of the toppest films on Netflix, they've actually signed them to do a series. And that's because the one they did before was very successful. In as much as we are thinking how to do some very great things, great movies, great ideas, we should also tr start looking at making commercial viable productions. Nobody wants to finish a film and you just want to begin to analyze and tell people how beautiful that film is when it's actually not bringing in ROI. And that was actually the mistake some of our people who started the industry then did. They are only interested in, I want to shoot a good film. I want to shoot a good film. But have you actually been able to check ROI on that project? So uh, I want to end by saying co-production, it's a very wonderful thing. And um, it's good a thing that Nigeria and South Africa have gotten to this step. And I'm sure that 2024, is going to be a better year for major filmmakers in South Africa and Nigeria to make better projects. Thank you very much. So it is important that when you write a story, when you write a script, your script must have objectives. What is it that you seek to achieve through that script? The message must be very clear. But he also spoke about the location. You can't say you are in a co-production treaty with a South African producer, but you are shooting the entire two-hour movie in Nyanya. So it will it wouldn't really uh, make sense. And and, and the storyline must also be quite very clear in terms of what it is that you want to achieve. But what are, uh, one other important aspect that is being emphasized by panel members is the fact that cultural exchange is quite very important because that is a very, very important element in a movie to make us all understand where people are coming from, 
what makes them tick and what is it that they want to achieve. I'm going to give the mic to our next speaker who will introduce herself and uh, shoot from the hip. Madam. Thank you, sir. Co-production was supposed to solve. If we was in a proper arranged co-production deal, he will not, they will not even need to arrest him in Bamenda because they will definitely know that you cannot go here, you cannot, if you come to film in Abuja for instance now, and you come and meet Imeya, but I want to work with Imeya, but there are places that will tell you, do not shoot here, do not go here, this is what we need to do. But he just went on his own and had that issues. If not for God, I'm not sure he could have come out. So that is why co-production is very, very key and important, please. Thank you. Thank you very much.